especially when it comes to the sales. And I've worked pretty hard. I think I've come up with the best solution that I can come up with. So let me show you how I made the sales. I'll give you a little tour of the ship. And uh, this will probably be my last build episode, but I will do one more video just showing the ship kind of a preview of, of what it really looked like when I completely finished the ship. I only have a small amount of things that I need to complete. There's a couple of rigging lines that I want to do and maybe a few more things on the deck and I've got some sails that will be those uh, kind of triangular ones that go on the front. Even though I've enjoyed the adventure and I'm proud of what I've made, I think in hindsight I should have saved up my money and purchased the ZHL 2019 Golden version. It has more complete parts and a much better instruction book. But for anyone that bought one similar to the one I did, I hope these videos have helped you. So let's take a little tour of the ship and let me show you how I ended up making the sails. The sails I did by making three layers, and I'll show you that when I make a sample to show you how I did it. I'm still considering doing a little more work on them and maybe doing some more shredding. Some areas are just a little bit too thick. But overall, I do like the look better than any plain cloth material. I've added some additional supplies. I had purchased some HO scale barrels and crates. So I put one there, added a few barrels there, um, stacked up some wooden barrels towards the back. I decided I'd put a wheelbarrow on the ramp going into the ship on this side. Then on the open side I put in the last couple cannons. There's a cannon here. I'd made an error on this cannon. I'd put it here. I moved it back to where it belongs which is right in that opening there. And if you look closely I put supplies in the lower deck. So let me show you how I made the sails and again it's an art that you'll just have to keep working at. I know I could get better as time goes on. First thing I did was measure the timber that the sail would uh, attach to and as an example let's say nine and a half inches. So I cut out the material approximate that kind of an almost straight line across the top and this will be the top piece or the top of the sails. Then I grabbed and I pulled this layer up to there and I would just come up with three layers. So this is, there's one, this one will make two, and this will make the third. And the third one I made a little longer. This also I can pull down, see how it gives me kind of a ruffle look on those two. Then I took a needle and thread. I threaded the needle and then put a knot on just one end. Started at this end and I'm just going to attach these together. And I don't mind if they overlap, but I'll go ahead and get these fairly level. And I'll pull it through and when the knot is just about to reach the material I put just a dab of super glue on that because I don't want it to pull through. That'll hold that securely. Now I'm just going to push that needle through all three layers and I just did it pretty sloppily. So that was three passes and then I'll pull it through. I'm not going to gather it too much but you could gather it a little. It'll help a ruffled look and you can probably tell I'm putting quite a bit of space because this is just to tack it together. It's not any major purpose just kind of hold those three layers together. 
So then when you complete that all the way across, then I went to the next step. This I stapled to a, just a round piece of wood. This is fairly gritty sandpaper. But then I also did a sanding block and this seemed to work even better. And I would do one layer at a time. And I found that if I push on the edge and go crossways, it'll give me a shred that would be like caused by the wind. But I'm also going to do it all along the bottom. And I'm, now I'm pulling down and I'm shredding that so it doesn't have a straight edge. And it's just a matter of doing different directions. Some you can rip up all the way. You can also tear this. This is landscape fabric. But I've found that shredding it gives the more realistic look. You will have to clean the fuzz off the sandpaper from time to time. And patience and a soft touch will pay off in the long run. Now on these edges I am pulling pushing down a little harder because I want to get rid of that straight line. That doesn't look natural. So I think you're getting the idea, and I'm going crossways, so the sail will actually would set like this. This would be, well, either one could be the top or the bottom, just need to give it a little fold. So if you wanted to have the sails unfurled, that would re look really good. Now I chose to roll them up so I, I lose the effect of all that work. But when I put them on, they were it just overpowered the ship, so I decided to, to roll them up. And you could do more, just lightly keep going until you wear that away. Because, see, I could actually shred some of this more. And in place, I'll take either a, a serrated knife or something that has some abrasion to it. won't be able to use sandpaper. my flag. So like I said, I'll do uh, like a featured film showing everything that I've done and put some music to it, better backgrounds. But I just wanted to give you an idea how I ended up doing the sales. And I do like them look, see this looks kind of old and rotted. That's a little bit what I was trying to attain. Kind of like this where it's hanging down and shredded. Now I've tied them on so if I ever want to go back to just a bare bones ship without the sails I can take them off. Because I really like the way it looked without the sails. But I'm trying to stay true to the movie theme and how they've been cursed and everything's rotting away. I do plan on building another one. I would like to get the ZHL model. But in reality, I'm very happy with this one too. I do have some more electrical work to do as far as making the box to hold the battery. I'm also considering going with a 9 volt transformer. I'll have to go to an electronics supply store and see what I would need to do that so I could convert away from this square battery to one that plugs in and I could put it on a timer and have lights come on automatically. Now 
I'm also considering having the lifeboats hang over the edge and place them in a couple different spots as opposed to putting them on the deck of the ship. They just take up so much room. That's the latest on the Black Pearl. I'm going to do a more fancy with music overview of the build and I'll do better on my backdrop for that episode. As always, thanks for watching. Appreciate everyone that has followed along on this build. This is Boiler Dan 1 where my motto is, I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. And considering I had never really built a major model ship like this, I'm I'm very pleased. Thanks for watching.